All right. So this is the forecast for 2024. And in this uh, video uh, that you will have to keep, and I strongly advise you to watch this video again, um, maybe at the end of the first quarter, at the end of the second quarter, at the end of the third quarter, and into the end of the year to see how the year played out according to the forecast. And this is a forecast that is based on technical analysis. This is not something that I'm looking into a crystal ball. It's just that I'm looking at charts and I'm determining levels from which we could potentially have some really good effects into 2024. And that brings us clarity, peace of mind, and stress-free environment into our trading. All right, so we're going to begin with NASDAQ. And of course, as always, we're going, when we do these forecasts, we're going to start with the really highest timeframes. And this is the yearly chart. Now, how many of you guys in here have ever looked at a yearly chart? Please type one. Please type one. These charts are going to help you not only with determining the potential bias for the year. <laughs> okay. Uh, when I first started looking, I uh, when I first started trading, I have to admit, I was literally not looking at early charts when I was uh, day trading. And this is a really big mistake because the number one thing that we need to understand in trading is the directional bias. Now, how many of you guys have heard CNBC all last year saying that recession, right? The R word, recession, 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 fear mongering, price lower, uh, Kramer short, you know, and all those um I would say not founded uh, wordings and analysis in the market that came in. But when you have the power to analyze what's going on in the market, then you don't have to listen to anybody else, but listen to the charts. So the charts are going to be the ones that, are, uh, that aren't going to do the talking. Okay. This is 2022. This candle right here represents one year of trading activity. Hard to believe. Yes, that's true. And this candle right here represents the 2023. This candle right here represents these little two days, two days of th actually three days of trading session right now. I want to show you something. Okay. I want to show you something very powerful. So once we take out a high, for example, this is the high of the year. Once we take it out here, the price action typically continues higher, okay? Typically continues very high. There's a way to determine projected targets. We could do it here or like I wanted, like I like to do it. I like to do it on a quarterly basis. This is the line, by the way, that we have on the yearly. You can see it right here. And what I like to do is I like to do the projections and then we're gonna come back to the yearly and I'm gonna show you some examples, right? And we're gonna trace some projections. Now, what these projections are doing is they're uh, pinpointing the highest point that we had in 2021. And I'm dragging, you can see here that I'm dragging my cursor to the lowest point that we had in 2022. So basically we need to connect a prominent high to a prominent low and an ongoing trend to determine the further projection for price. Now, why is this very important? Is this, this is super important? Exactly, Kirk, these are Fibonacci projections. So why are these levels so important for us? Well, because it bring, uh, brings us clarity. Needless to say that when the price action is gonna hit one of these levels or when it's going to trade around one of these levels, these levels are gonna have a super high impact into our day trading, believe it or not. Okay, so they're going to have, these are the, let's say the lines, the levels, I should call them. These are the levels that are going to impact the trajectory of price. So what do you think is going to happen when the price action is going to start taking out this FIB here that we have at 16,767, this one right here, where I have my cursor. Okay, this is the full retracement. This is the full retracement. This is the highest point of Q4, okay, of 2021. 
Well, this is what's happening. You get a full blast to the upside. Exactly, fellas, you get the breakout. And once you have established a breakout, you can see here that the price action, well, again, this is these are uh, quarterly candles right here. So each of these candles represent three months of trading activity. And we have just started one. But we're trading into the higher part of the candle, as you can see. And when the price action is trading into the higher part of the candle, you should be bullish, okay? Bullish with capital letters. So basically what we're looking here is to see if we hold the prior low level right here of 16,500, oh, what is it, 564, right? This is the level that we need to hold. This is the level of last year, okay? So now this level from last year, remember when I was telling you guys yesterday that we may have room to go to a 550, maybe uh, um, five, 550, maybe around 500? This is where I got my read. OK, from quarterly charts. And basically, I was looking at this high that was from 2022, first quarter of 2022. All right. So that's how you do this multi time frame analysis. So all in all, the projection for NASDAQ for 2024 and 2025. Remember one thing, regardless of what channels you're listening to or what newsletters you're subscribed to, Election years are very bullish and typically they tend to be very bullish as we're getting into the uh, summer period. In fact, into the fall period, uh, the last hurrah for the market is going to be July and August. And then September and October are going to be a little bit choppier. September is typically one of the hardest months to trade throughout the year, including October. October volatility comes back, but volatility comes back into the market, into an election year where you're having a lot of indecision, right? So the bottom line is that things are going to get super choppy into that uh, into that period of time. So these are the targets. These are the projected targets, the 18,400. Then we have basically the 20,000, 20,500. And then we have a bigger extension into the 20, almost 27,000. OK, so we have huge, huge, huge um, projections for NASDAQ. All right. So let's get it now to a monthly chart. Right. So forget about the extensions now that we know that is the longer time. For, that is the longer extension through 2024, potentially 2025. That's why I said, listen to this video as we're moving into these um um, let's say quarters as we're moving through these quarters. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Okay, this month, this month, we're going to be looking and don't forget that earnings season is starting next week on Friday. Remember that the results are coming from fourth quarter trading uh, from fourth quarter uh, analysis. So what this means is that typically December, November and December are very strong months. Remember that retail uh, uh, sales, uh, uh, for example, online sales have been higher uh, than last year. So they're gradually moving higher and higher and higher each and every single year since I have been tracking them. And I think that was in 2017 to 2018. That's when I started uh, uh, tracking online sales every single, uh, every single third and uh, fourth quarter of the year. When I was looking for window dressing, when I was looking for, you know, all these um, uh, specialty trades into the end of the year. By the way, you have the breakout in the Dow if you took my last recommendation trade uh, into the 905, 906, 0907. Now it's trading into the 917. Your target is 930. Just a quick reminder of that. So here's what our reference point is for this month. Uh, we had a very bullish, and this uh, um, candle represents 30 days of trading activity, one month of trading activity, basically 20 trading days. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that the more we trade in the upper half of last month, the more bullish we become. So basically, this month, if we take out last year's high, and of course, NASDAQ has a high of 165, 17, 165, the price action is going to have about 90% chances of continuation higher into the first extension that we talked about into the FIBS, right? 
All right, so this is what we should be seeing. 930, guys, into the Dowski. Take some profits here and put your stop at break even, okay? Put your stop at break even. If you took the last trade, 905, 906, 907 entry uh, with the, the stop into the 840, this is your first target at 930. Look for a second target. Now your stop is break even. Look for a second target into the 950. Okay, good job, everybody. So this is what we're forecasting for uh, for NASDAQ for the month. Here's the deal. If the price action should be trading below last month's low, which is 660, then the price action will see a much uh, a steeper correction. And it's going to be probably towards this 10 EMA into the 300. However, the trend is going to remain intact. Okay. Oh my gosh, David, this is so good. David, qualified account evaluation. Awesome, 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 David. You're rock. You're rocking. <laughs> good job. This is the best news ever. <laughs> when you guys are making money, this is the best thing ever. Okay. So this is the forecast for this month. All right. So if this month, we continue above 165, 17,165, we go higher. If we break below 17,720, we continue lower to the 10 EMA. Okay, so this is this is basically the area where you should be short, okay, around here, not aggressively short. And then back here into the um, 15,300, 15,400, you should be bullish again, all right? So this is the forecast for this month. Now for this week, for this week, remember the line that I drew on the yearly? Remember the line that I drew on the yearly? Okay, you guys are rocking. You're seeing the 50, trim some more and lift your stop to 30. 930 is your trail stop in the Dow. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, now, this is the line that we had, we have in NASDAQ, right? And see how this plays out on the weekly. Ta-da! Do you guys see something really unusual here? Look at the punch and the rally that we're having right now in the market is purely technical based on the high right here from December 27, 2021. Huh? Are you kidding me? But we're day trading. Uh-huh. See how these higher time frames are impacting your day-to-day -day trading. Super cool. Super, super cool. All right. So what's in store for this week? Well, this week, we're going to try to see if we zip up a little bit higher. And if we zip up a little bit higher and if we leave a, top, a bottoming tail behind, that means that we are going to get a lift off into next week. Remember, next week is going to be like so-and-so because earnings season is starting on Friday. Friday, you're not going to see really high impact, but we're going to start see, uh, seeing a bigger impact in a couple of weeks from, uh, from today. All right. And from the daily, right, you can see this is that yearly line that I have, right? Remember the yearly? Ta-da-da! -da. Okay, from, from 2020. Uh, here it is from 2021, right? Uh, here it is, guys. It's in sync with this line right here. So the reason why we're getting this lift is because we're getting the support from 2021 at the end. Isn't this cool? Don't you guys love technical analysis, guys? You don't need Kramer. You don't need CNBC. Like you don't need anybody else. All you have is your charts that are going to speak to you. Like seriously, you don't need anybody else telling you anything. Don't let every, anybody you know, kind of like talk you out of anything because you're going to be the best trader that you can be by acknowledging these uh, levels that we are discussing here. All right. And this is the forecast for NASDAQ. Um, now let's jump into the S&P. All right. This is the S&P. By the way, guys, I think that it would be appropriate to put your trail stop at 50, 950. Anybody that is into the Dow Long, 950. All right, and here's the daily, by the way. We had the downtrend. We uh, broke out here in uh, um, November. We went higher. We established another support zone. We went higher, and now we're pulling back. Here's the thing, guys. 
I was telling you earlier that if we take out yesterday's highs in all the indices, we're going to be back into the bullish zone. And this is like massive confirmation, bullish, very, very bullish uh, for tomorrow. However, we don't need to take this high out because let's say it's four o'clock now. And if the market closes right now, guess what? It's still going to be bullish for tomorrow. Still going to be a bullet. still going to be super bullish for tomorrow. Okay. Because we have a built-in green. So therefore, let's say that we close here. Let's say this is four o'clock and this is where we closed at 68. Anything that trades over 68 tomorrow, it's going to be ultra bullish. So shorting is now going to be an option. Okay. Uh, now let's take a look at the forecast here. And what we see here is that, yes, we took out the, I don't know. I don't think I did it right. Let me just take it out. All right. Let me do it again because you have to be accurate. Boom. Okay, here it is. So we have the 4,800, okay? We have the 4,800. We need to break above this 4,800, okay? Now, I was showing you guys projections into the Dow. I'm going to show you some projections here that I like to calculate, but I want to show you the effect because sometimes you may go like, oh, this is a bunch of baloney, uh, you know, it may not work. I want to show you how these projection work, how these projection works work and more so how these triggers on the yearly on the quarterly play out so here are the projections 2024 2025 five thousand dollars of uh, five thousand four level in s p 5100 5600 6 thousand and we have seven thousand these are the projections this is where the price is gonna go okay uh one year two years three years these are the projections for higher uh, let me show you something. Okay. Let me show you a yearly trigger. This is it. So we had a 2023 ma massive yearly breakout here in AVGO. This is a stock. I can't show you something else because we're only trading futures indices and futures indices are on the verge of breaking out and doing exactly this. You see the red bar here. You see the green bar that it's taken out, Right. This is usually what you're expecting. This is a yearly chart. These are super, super bullish. So yes, you know, Randy, you can make a lot of money if you're, for example, taking longer term trades that are in sync with the yearly and the quarterly. You can, so for example, the stock here went from a high of 677, let's say 678, all the way into a high of 1140. Okay, so this is the power. So it, it doesn't matter, you can, actually have one share, okay? But one share is gonna do the heavy lifting. The number of shares doesn't really, is not that really important if you have the right setup, okay? So this is now going back to ES. I just wanted to show you the power of the burst of the yearly. We are at this point right now. Remember AVGO that pushed higher? This is a massive bull sandwich here, guys. It's called a massive bull sandwich. This strategy right here, this is one of the coolest strategies that we teach in our course. And this is a bull sandwich strategy. It can be applied to stocks, to options, to whatever you want. So throughout this year, if we get again back over 4,800, which I think it's totally not impossible. I mean, we could get there this week or next week. The price action is going to go exponentially higher. Where to? These are the levels right here. Okay, these are the levels right here. And I showed you the example with AVGO. Okay, I showed you the example with AVGO. Would you like to see the projections for AVGO? Here they are. Take a look, take a look, take a look. So it's back into this fat, massive, massive resistance. You see how it's stalled over here? You see how it's stalled over here for a quarter, but then you have this big impulse for higher. Now you tell me if this is not super cool. You tell me if this is not super cool. Super, super cool, guys. Super cool stuff, right? See how it went to projections. And if you think that, hey, you know what? I'm not really sure if AVGO still has power to move higher. Let me share something else with you. Yes, it does have another projected target of, uh, 1500. 
right? So it still has another $500 into it. Look at this, $500 right into it. This is really cool stuff. I love technical analysis. All right, so now we do uh, the Dow. Whoops. Okay, now we're going to do the Dow. And we're going to look at yearly charts. I don't know why this one doesn't have the... Uh, I don't know. That's so weird. Hmm. Oh, here they are. Okay. But it doesn't have... I don't know why it doesn't show this. And it doesn't show the quarterly. Oh, yeah, it shows the quarterly. I don't know why it doesn't show the yearly. That is so weird. The Dow doesn't show the yearly. Huh. I don't know. Anyways, uh, it's bull it's more bullish than SP. Okay. So it it's more bullish than the SP. And basically, you can see here that we took this high out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great idea. Thanks so much, don't you, man? Okay, so we're going to go to the yearly. Here it is. Great. Thank you. <laughs> I was like panicking there. Okay, so here it is. Remember that chart of AVGO? Here it is. Pointing higher. Pointing higher. You know, a lot of times I'm being asked into the room, why don't you short? I want to short. So the answer to that is like you short when you have some kind of confirmation that the market is moving lower. What would have happened if we would have shorted all last year? This was last year, by the way. This was last year. And if you look through our performance portfolio, I think we had only like one or two shorts the whole entire year. That's it. And then we only had longs, 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 right? And that is because we had a dominant bull ear. So speaking of, uh, speaking of targets, here are the targets that we're expecting into the Dow. And again, the targets are going to be different for uh, YM, but uh, here you go, right? All the way into the 500, right? And this is the diamonds. And now we're going to get back into the YM because I just wanted to show you the yearly. And now the quarterly, yes, we do have it here. So I'm going to be able to show you the quarterly projections. Okay, so here are the levels. All right, so the first level, and by the way, we're already trading into extensions, 30,700, that is the next target. And then we break that, we're going to 4,100. We break that, we're going very close to 50,000, 49,400. Super cool stuff. And then for the monthly, you can see here that we have already uh, broken above this level right here. The monthly is already positioned for higher. That's why it's, uh, I like to play strength on weakness. So I like to pick the strongest index in order to deliver results and the weak in a strong market environment and the same for the weakness, right? I select the weakest. The weekly chart still super strong. You can see here that we had a doji indecision. Then we had a, a beautiful move uh, higher. We had a beautiful Santa Claus rally. And typically Dow, Dow stocks participate in the Santa Claus rally. That's why you're seeing a big burst to the upside. And then we have so far of a doji here. But a doji where the open and the close so far are into the highs which indicate that we may have a super strong close going into tomorrow because take a look at today. Remember what I said? I gave you a level today. And I said, if the price is going to get over 38,014, we're going to move higher. Look at the gorgeous follow through into this 10 EMA. This is the ultra power trend. You have a nice equidistant uh, um channel here, uh, a cha equidistant channels formed by the MAs. So just absolutely gorgeous. And then lastly, we have uh, RTY. Uh, RTY would basically, um, uh, the here it is. Basically, when you're talking about it, we're not going to use any kind of projections because we already have some highs. And the price action really needs to take out those highs before we do anything else. But um, for example, we're going to trace the yearly, right? We're going to trace the yearly. So anything that trades over 2,100, that was the high for last year. Very close, right? Very, very close. Anything that trades over 2,100 is going to be very bullish and it's going to try to go into this high. 
of 2457. Now quarterly, right? We don't need anything else for the quarterly, right? Any projections because we need to take out this high in order to use that tool. But until that uh, until that settles and until we complete this tradable void, we're not we don't we don't need it. So we already have a target into the prior high. So this would be what we need this let's say this quarter in order to start moving higher. From the monthly perspective, this is not an easy level. And if you're thinking, why is the cap here at 2100? Why is this? Because this is a whole number, psychological number. Well, yes. And the other thing is that if you look to the left-hand side, and I'm going to try to see if I can pull this here, okay, you're going to be able to see something uh, very interesting, right? And I'm going to squeeze the chart a little bit so you have a little bit more information on it. These are some lows. Notice the buying off of these support zones, right? We The price was trading above the 10 and it was just moving, 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 moving higher, okay? Moving higher. Uh, by the way, guys, if you're still into the Dow trade, your trail should be 70, 65 or 70. 65 is gonna keep you in the trade uh, 70 is good. 70 is good. Okay. If you're still in anyways. So bottom line is that we have this hefty support here that now is literally creating a lot of resistance and problem for price. The price action went into the end of the year to retest these lows. And right now it's kind of like thinking about it. Like it doesn't really know what it's going to do. So obviously, if the price action is going to trade above the 2100, that's going to be the confirmation that it's going to take out these highs. So the objective, the first objective of RTY is to take out these highs. Now, remember that RTY is notorious for ranging for long periods of time. For in fact, for this range right here was developed if from April 2022 until the end of the year and going into 2020, uh, 2024. This range that you guys see here uh, started January 2021 and the breakdown came in January 2022. This is a one year range. This is a two year range. It tends to range a lot. OK, um, so bottom line is that the support that is developed here is developed by these two peaks that we had in 2018 and 2020 and is holding really well. So there is a big problem with Russell that I'm seeing. And that's the one of the reasons why it's stuck. It's getting its selling pressure from a high and it's creating a lower high. It will, this lower high is not yet created here because in order for this to become a lower high, we need to take out the lowest point here, the 1630s, which we didn't. So we're getting bearish pressure from these, uh, from these lows but we're getting buying pressure from these highs over here. So the price action is literally trapped. So it's really, really hard for the price action to kind of like engage in any kind of continuational pattern. So this is RTY. And then we have, let's do oil, CL. Let's see if they have this contract here. All right, 71.25. Yes, this is the correct contract. So oil here, uh, as you guys could see, let's go do it to the yearly. It's very mixed. You have a lot of volatility, which look, take a look at this. This is the 2020. Do you guys remember when it was negative, right? So they're paying me to get gas. Just kidding. Uh, but anyway, we oil went negative. And then we have, uh, we have this top right here. It's super, super volatile. The good news about oil is that it's trading above the MAs. So there are some two critical levels here because we are talking about yearly. We need to take the yearly out, last year's high, which is 95, or we take the other low out and we're bearish. This is going to be bullish above. This is going to be bearish below. Notice that the price is trading in the latter half, right? So this is not, but keep in mind that oil is, um, you know, uh, going to be it's going to be very volatile throughout this year. And that is because, you know, there are a lot of conflicts. Uh, they're talking about war in Iran. They're talking about, you know, the conflicts that we're having in the Red Sea and all that stuff. I mean, all this is affecting the price of uh, oil. 
And keep in mind that oil is a very crowded pirates. I can't believe like 2024 pirates. <laughs> like, seriously, do they dress up like pirates? That would be fun. God, I, I just can't believe what's going on in the world. I mean, what happened to diplomacy? Anyways, quarterly. All right, let's take a look at, see how the quarterly is nice bracketed out. Definitely bullish above or bearish below. All right, and let's take a look at long-term gold, GC. Let's see if it's GC1 or GC2. Uh, no, it's GC2. Okay. All right. Okay, this is it. All right, so let's go back to the yearly. Okay, so on the yearly, we see a massive extension higher, right? And we have last year's high which is here, 2140. We take out last year. And whenever that's going to happen throughout this year, that is when all uh, the prices in gold are going to try to soar and they're going to move higher. Uh, remember that uh, gold typically has pretty good action into election years. Okay, remember 2026, this is, uh, th th this is 2016. All right, 2016. Uh, it went, you know, build up a little bit higher. Um, then we had 2017, then we had 2020, right? Oil higher. So again, 20, uh, 2140 over 2140, this is going to be bullish. Okay. That, that's the bigger picture the quarterly as well. This is the quarterly last three months of trading activity. This could pop, this could totally go higher. And then we have on the monthly, which is, totally in an indecision, but it's very extended from the 10 EMA. So it's trying to build up some pressure. So far, very neutral right now. Very, very neutral. Uh, for the week, it's just pure chop. It doesn't have a lot going for it, but the monthly is a lot clearer. Um, and uh, typically, we need to see either a break to the upside or a break to the downside. Uh, we're still trading above the 10 EMA, so that means that we're still into bullish mode. And in fact, here are some projections. Uh, by the way, let's do some projections for the quarterly here uh, because they're pretty outstanding. All right. And the projections are, okay, so here they are. Uh, 2,200, we have 2,300, 2,350, and we have two more. Uh, 2,800 and 3,500. And that's for, uh, that's for GC. All right. So this is, I just wanted to do this analysis for you guys, because this is so important because once you know what to expect throughout the year, things are, um, much more clear. You have an idea about the bigger picture. All right. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I don't think I did what uh, oil fibs. Did I do oil fibs? I don't think so. Because we need to take out those highs. Okay. You mean GC? Okay. Yeah, oil is here. We need to take out these highs. But GC... All right, I have them here. Let me just zoom them in. Okay, these are the levels. Yeah. Yeah, I used this high uh, from the third quarter of 2020 and the low uh, from uh, fourth quarter 2022. That's for 2024, 2025, 2026, Terenji. Time will tell when it's going to go there. Awesome. Well, let me show you something because I always show people, uh, you know, there are some people that say, hey, you know what? I don't believe this baloney. Well, let me tell you something. I was trading in 2000. I was trading in uh, 2007. Okay. And if you look at a chart, what do you guys see here? What do you guys see here? 
if you are not freaked out, I mean, I know how, you know, double top and double bottom. So what does the double, double top and double, double bottom do? It creates a range, right? So once we have the range, what do we do? We go like, okay, I want to see if there are any projections. I want to see uh, from the highest point to, oops, to the lowest point here. I want to see where the price is going to go. I want to see where the price is going to go. I'm so curious to see where the price is going to go in the spice. Should I buy it? Should I not buy it? What should I do? This is where I get my confidence in trading. Okay. Do you guys see it? So a forecast that was done first quarter of 20, uh, 20, uh, 2009. Okay. 2009 from the high to the low. You could do the high to low here. Same thing. Tomato, tomato. Okay. You could do the high here. But I created this range. And this is what this is what helped me build my swing account, build my it takes time. It takes time. But this is what literally, because I bought the bottoms here. I bought the bottoms and this is how I build my investing account. This is how I built my swing trading account. This is where I created my income into my day trading. This is where I added swing. Uh, this is where I added um, futures trading. I was trading stocks here. Day trading stocks, swing trading stocks, investing in stocks. This is where I added in 2015 to 2016, I added uh, futures. Yeah, so pretty cool, right? So you guys see where we're at. Now, because this became like a self-fulfilled prophecy and we have achieved the targets from 2009, okay? We have new levels. And that's why I like to build this session and do this session every single year at the beginning so you don't miss a beat. Yeah, exactly. You can add that too. I, uh, this one doesn't allow it. This one doesn't allow it. Yeah, I'm maxed out here. They don't have it anymore. But yeah, that would be the next one. You got it, Daniel. What is the price on that one? If you calculated that, I'm curious. Yeah, so this is it, guys. This is it.